Uh, can you repeat that one part in order to know oh. how to be so positive? Say yeah, I, I see things. I actually have a tattoo down my spine of it that says, uh, without pain, happiness has no meaning. And I believe in yeah. the pendulum. So, so like you bring up a beautiful point, you know, um, I have this, you know, I, I go to therapy and, and I, I, I really invest in my mental health and no one's been a, a, ever been able to help me look at what I'm about to tell you in a positive light up until a couple of days ago. I have a personal trainer and um, he said to me, he, he was making a joke. He said, you know, my mother-in-law father follows you on Instagram. She asked me if you were single. So I said, he, and he, he asked me, like, if that happens a lot and stuff like that. And I said, you know, it's interesting. People get this image of me on social media, but they don't know how toxic it is to date me, mm. how, how, how toxic it is. And he said, what are you, he's like, what are you talking about? He's like, I, you're the nicest guy I've ever met. I love training you. If I had a daughter, you know, he has a son. He's, if I had a daughter, I don't think I could want her to date anyone else but you. Uh -huh. And I said, his name is Rod. I said, Rod, you know sometimes I'll, I'll, I could be in the room with someone and I think about something negative and I create like nothing, nothing at all happens, but all of a sudden I become completely cold and shut off. And I said, I could be at a restaurant and I could hear someone speaking badly about someone. And you would think that they were talking to me. I said, I take on everyone's energy and I become this this toxic person. And of course, since nothing happened, the person in the room thinks that they did something wrong. Mm. And the more they push to try to figure out what they did wrong, the more upset and closed off I get. Mm. And I said, it's, I said, it's such a terrible trait that, you know, I, I feel so bad for the people in my life. And you know what he said to me? He said, Lee, he said, you're the most giving person. Like, he because I'm with him two hours every morning, so he hears me on the phone. He if he needs a favor, you know, I, I I'm he hear he knows me very well. And he said, I'm so glad to hear you say this because I was wondering like what's there's got to be something wrong with him. And he said, but there's nothing wrong with you. He said, I believe in order to be as good as you are, you also have to be bad. Mm. Like you also have to be low. And he said, for you to jump really high, what do you have to do? You have to crouch down low to the floor. Mm. And it was such a, such, and you know, he explained it better, but it was such a beautiful way to, for me to view it as if like, may, like, you know, I can go really good, really high, but in order to get really high, you have to go really low sometimes, you know? And it's, uh, it's true. I believe the most amount of growth is in the struggle. There is no life without pain. Mm. It teaches us the most beautiful things in the world. You know, it like it, 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 it just it's when you know how to when you know that pain is happening for you and not happening to you, which is a really hard thing to understand when you're able to embrace it and know that it's 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 for you like this is. I believe my personal belief that anything that happens to us in our life is so that we can make another life better. Mm. I believe that no matter what you go through, it's not for you. It's for you to use that energy, that tool, that wisdom, that experience. It's for you to use that to help another person mm. in some way. And then that person uses that and that person, and that is the gift of life. That is why we are, we all, everyone's looking for their purpose. We all have the same purpose. It's to help each other in some way. Right. We can all help each other in different ways, but that is your purpose. Hmm. It's, it's to help people. We all have it. I and I, I believe that to my core. And, you know, the people, I hear stories of what dogs go through, cats. I hear, I hear stories that, you know, really test me can can i believe in people again can i trust people again and it's like yes you can because this is so you can teach so that you can inspire this is not for you for you to for you to learn this and experience this and cl be closed off from it is the opposite of what the universe wants you to do with it you know right so in bringing up that point, you've talked a lot about how you had a fear of death when you were yeah. younger and the concept of uncertainty. Um, when did that start for you? And also, how did you figure your way out of that? So you changed your mentality on that fear. Wow, you're really good at this. My goodness. Um, 
I've done I, a lot I'll of never, research on you. <laughs> I'll never forget the story. And by the way, I know sometimes I could talk a lot. I'm not as sensitive as I once was. Never hesitate to interrupt me, okay? okay. Please. I'm not gonna interrupt you, but go ahead. I love it. But, but I don't mind if I'm rambling, you know. But I'll tell you the story. I was sitting on my mom. My parents watched a lot of news. You know, the news was always on, on every TV in the house, the news was on. And I was sitting on my, my mom's bed while she was getting ready for work. And I had just been able to start talking and understanding things. And somebody died. I think it might've been Frank Sinatra, if I am not mistaken. But somebody died. And I asked my mom, how did they die? And she said, I, whatever she said, they just, they died, right? And I said, how can someone die like that? And she said, a lot of people die that way. And I said, how else do people die? And she said, you name it, you know? And then she said, she, you, she's like, Lee, you know that everybody dies, right? And I said, everybody dies? She said, everybody, I said, and then what happens? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> And like, when she said that, my world, I remember like feeling nothing but fear. And, and, you know, again, she did the best that she could. But in, in that moment, instead of like comforting me and, and letting me know, you know, that it's about the journey and that life, you know, she was like, grow, grow up. Like everybody dies, you know, snap out of it. I'm going to work. It was very cold and quick. And I started just obsessing over the thought, you know, it, it, it brought me such anxiety. I used to just think about it and out loud, I'd say, no, 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 no. Like, don't think about it right now. You know, no, no, no. And I realized, you know, like, I, I think I really had that fear up until I kind of found my purpose. That, that That's really what took it away. It was finding, figuring out why I was here. Because then it doesn't matter to me what happens after you die. It matters to me what happens while I'm alive. Right. You know, right. That's and, and, th and that changed my whole perspective is like f f finding the Asher house, creating the community. Um, and also, to be honest, and not the mo this is what I'm about to say is I'm very positive or optimistic, but it's the truth. As you get for me, as, being so invested into animal rescue, you know, you can go to the shelter without really knowing much about animal rescue you just know about the dog but with what i do now finding so much about how cruel people can be how unfair life can be i start thinking to myself that death can't be that way that th that i am more curious you know about what would happen instead of fearing it i'm more curious because i don't think anything in the world would be as unfair or how or as cruel as how life can be. Now, I also believe that life can be beautiful and peaceful and all this. But I think what I, I now have the belief where my feeling, my answer is not the unknown, that I believe there's a peace to it. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important, you know, to do your best to find that peace here and, and do your best to make it count. But I don't think that that it will be that unfair once we're gone, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So, you know, I think that's so important what you're talking about finding your purpose because so many of us are lost, right? And even if we're chugging oh, yeah. along and doing what we think we're supposed to do and we, you know, find that partner or we have kids or we find a job, sometimes people are still really unhappy and they can't figure out why. And you oh know, I'm, God, yeah. I'm 48 years old and I'm doing my best to, you know, reinvent my life all the time and figure it out because I've realized that that sense of being unhappy is because I haven't found a purpose. Do you know what I mean? And so I'm constantly mm. trying to figure it out. I think it's the, the first step is for your second act of life kind of, or even getting to that point where you feel like your life has started is finding that purpose. And for a lot of people, it's really hard, but it sounds like for you at some point you were able to figure out your purpose. And um, so I want to get into that because that's where you kind of flourish and become someone new, even though you're talking about being the same person, but it's when it, your life started. Sure. 